It is Off the Press, the newspaper review program. Good morning. My name is Amaka Okwe. This morning, we'll be taking a look at a couple of uh, newspaper headlines, the nation, the punch, I'll call them as we go by. But we shall begin uh, with the nation newspaper, and I know it will be displayed for you. It says, Mayday, tea, uh, Mayday tears for workers amid COVID-19. That's it there, already displayed on your screens. Uh, Ngege, we will s secure jobs according to him. And that story is on pages 2 and um, 29 of the Nation newspaper, I believe. INEC to ratify guidelines for Edo and Ondo elections on page 5. Governor okays chloroquine for COVID-19. Find out what the story is about. It's on page 29. Mohammed says, I vouch for it. That is him vouching for chloroquine. Recall that there was a time we said, you know, the, it was in the news that people were going buying chloroquine and it was even abused at that point. But well, here is a governor saying, yes, he vouched for it. So, Oshamale to employers, don't sack workers or cut salaries. Uh, that story is on the front page. Isolation centers running out of space for patients. Government seeks uh, seek home treatment. FCT renovates cemeteries. 113 health workers infected. U.S. to, gi uh, to give go-ahead for trial drug. And to the right of the newspaper is the global figures of COVID-19. We are now at 3.3 million, 58,000 of global cases of coronavirus. Uh, deaths... Um, at 233,639, recoveries at 1.37, that's not bad. Uh, and then on the national figures, we are now at 1,932 uh, for Nigerian cases with 58 deaths recorded and active uh, cases at 1,555, whereas new cases is now 204. We need to uh, review this paper will be remotely is Lulu Elegbe. He will be joining us via phone to review the papers this morning. Good morning, Mr. Elegbe. Are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good to have you. We're starting this morning with the Nation newspaper. So I'm just trying to read out the headlines. Um, okay. Isolation centers running out of space for patients. Uh, that's the big story for the nation newspaper. A government seeks home treatment. FCT renovates cemeteries. 113 health workers infected. That's a lot. And U.S. to give go ahead for trial drug. The story is on the front page. You can see it there. But it's continued on page uh, inside uh, there. Then Nigeria's oil and gas exports to fall by 26.6 billion. Uh, dollars that's according to IMF testing capacity uh, inside the story you have um, this bit testing capacity now 2,500 daily um, Oshun Kaduna turn back bus buses we flays politics of COVID-19 Benue index case sues the government interesting and emo didn't impound food trucks panic at Abuja hospital no cases in correctional facilities and government to meet manufacturers these and more you find inside the pages of the nation newspaper on pages 6 27 uh, 29 now lulu uh, I don't know which of the stories is catching your attention. Shall we begin with um, isolation centers running out of space for patients? Yeah, sure. So yeah. I think what it, what it play not just from this story, but from pretty much all points that you've, um, you've highlighted, is that the spread of this virus in Nigeria is getting to a point where it needs to be taken a lot more seriously. Um, if we're at the point where we're running out of bed spaces, even though we all know that we're not um, testing as many people as we should be doing, it's quite worrying to think about what would happen if we actually ramp up testing to the capacity that we should be testing. Um, as at yesterday, I think we had tested just maybe 13,000 people. Um, just to put that in perspective, Ghana, as at yesterday, had tested more than 100,000, South Africa close to, I think, 200,000. 
considering the fact that both countries' um, populations, uh, yes. Nigeria's population is higher than both countries combined, right. um, I think we're in a really bad place with regards to testing. We need to ramp that up. But if we're already struggling with bed space, mm -hmm. even with inadequate testing, then I think we, there's a lot more that needs to happen. And I, and, and I mean, this. My, my question or worry is, if this is the true situation and we are going out of the lockdown, the gradual lockdown easing out yeah. by Monday, um, how are we going to reconcile this? Because you are saying, people, the government is saying, well, you can go back to work now. On the other hand, we are saying, oh, we are at the point of community spread now. Yeah. Um, it, it looks like we, we are not taking uh, this whole COVID-19 thing serious, even with the decision. I'm not sure what's the you know, best thing to do or to say at this time, but it just looks scary by the day as we look at the figures. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree with you completely. Um, on the one, it's a, it's, a, it's a strange place to be because, <clears throat> excuse me, on the one hand, understand why, or rather understand the need to try to open up the country. It's for economic reasons. There's no other reason. And I can understand that because we don't have the same uh, social safety net that um, other countries, um, the UK, the US, and other countries outside of Nigeria have to deal with things like this. Mm. Um, the UK has been in lockdown for, I think, about seven, eight weeks now. The US, I think, um, depending on which states, they've been in lockdown for quite a few weeks as well. And they have the, the sorts of social safety net they have means that they can be in lockdown for that period of time and there's no significant um, impact on personal finances for some people, not everyone, but for some people. In the UK, for example, um, the government is going to pay salaries up to about £2,500 a month for people who lose their jobs or who will be made redundant during COVID-19 or during the lockdown. Obviously, we don't have that in Nigeria. So I can understand the need to try to open it. But then the, on the flip side is exactly what you said, mm -hmm. which is this thing is spreading. The Lagos State Commissioner of Health said last week or so that um, we're seeing a lot more community spread. Now, last night, there were 204 or so right. cases in Nigeria, right. 80 in Kano, 45, I think, in Lagos. It sounds like the absolute wrong time to be easing the lockdown. Uh, Germany and Ghana is their lockdown, and they've had a spike, a significant spike in cases. Mm -hmm. So it is worrying, um, but like I said, I understand why the why the government took the decision to start to ease the lockdown. But I worry about the consequences of that. Right. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, you know the story there where. Uh, Oshomale is asking employers, do not sack workers or cut salaries. I mean, today is uh, Workers' Day. Um, ideally, there would have been a lot of celebration, but with COVID-19, I guess the case is different. We had the uh, secretary from ULC this morning talking to us and saying, well, we can't necessarily do anything, but whatever we're going to do may just have to be online. Um, now, what are your thoughts there? Do you agree uh, with him? I mean, how feasible? is this, um, like you say, it's really a strange uh, place to be and quite unprecedented times that we are. But how do you, what, what are your thoughts on this? So it's, again, it's one of those ones that um, I'm not quite sure where they're coming from because the, just saying that employers should not sack workers mm -hmm. doesn't really make sense because you can't, unless you're, unless you're, you're putting that employer into some sort of program to guarantee um, revenues and salaries or something, not, not revenues, but to guarantee salaries of workers. Hmm. How exactly does the business that is not making money during this period supposed to keep paying salaries? So it's not, when you, you, you can't just say employers should not sack workers. I don't think any employer wants to sack workers just for sacking sake. But there are those but, who are already downsizing. Sorry? I'm saying, but there are others who are downsizing already. Yeah, exactly. Well, they, that's my point. So it's a, it's a business decision because at the end of the day, if the company is not making money, the company cannot pay salaries. It's that, it's that simple. So if the government is saying employers should not sack workers, 
I don't believe that the employers want to sack the workers, but it still comes back to the same point of if they are not making money, how do they pay salaries? In the UK, there are a lot of businesses are also not making money, for example, but they have, again, this social safety net mm. that, um, that guarantees workers' salaries during this period. So that's not happening. That's not happening in Nigeria. So a government cannot just say, don't sack workers without, have, without anything to go with it. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. All right. One more, one more from Nation before we move on to Punch. Uh, Governor O.K.'s chloroquine for COVID-19. What's your thoughts on that? Recall that uh, some, some, months, some weeks ago, we were abusing uh, chloroquine in the country, and NAFDAQ warned and said, you know, that's not the way to go. But here is the governor who says, I vouch for it. Yeah, so it's one of these things that... So, obviously, we've had... There's been this back and forth about whether or not chloroquine um, is, in, is, is effective against uh, COVID-19. And from what I understand, there are clinical trials across the world going on in that regard. But I think what the governor has done in this case is take what he sees as a calculated risk um, because most Nigerians have used chloroquine at some point um, for malaria. So he probably believes that, well, we use it for malaria, so there can't be that many, um, what's it called? There can't, be, there can't be that many reactions or adverse reactions to it. Of course, the danger of that is that, like any other drug, even something as quote-unquote basic as Panadol, mm -hmm. if it's used wrongly, it could have it could have dangerous consequences. Okay. So I, I don't I don't agree with it. I don't think a gov a gov I don't know if he's a medical doctor, but even if he was, there still has to be trials for these things. Right. You can't just say you've approved it. It's not something you do by fiat. Um, then there needs to be studies, there needs to be analysis of whether or not it works, what are the adverse reactions, um, does this actually work, do people that get, if people actually do get better, do they get better and then get um, reinfected? So there are, all these questions, there are all these unknown questions about it, but he feels like it's a calculated risk. I don't think it's a good idea, but um, well... I pray that the people that have taken it or that are taking it, I hope it works for them. Mm -hmm. I share in that prayer intention. All right, let's move on to the Punch newspaper now. Um, it would be displayed shortly. It says $3.4 billion supports IMF to conduct due diligence on CBN. That story is on page 26 from the Punch newspaper. National Assembly at Sequel and others salute Nigerians on Workers' Day on page 7. And 3,256 listed as CBN begins 50 billion naira COVID-19 fund disbursement. The, the punch newspaper is already displayed on your screen, and that story is on page 22. Nigerians, China disagree over Guangzhou's accommodation for 207 eviction. That story is on page 13 with a picture of Geoffrey Onyema there, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, for the punch newspaper, the big story there is scary. It says infected health workers rise from 40 to 113 in one week. That story is on pages 2 and 6. COVID-19 patients seeking alternative treatment, a federal government's lament. Donate your buildings as isolation centers, uh, Minister begs Nigerians. And Somolu blames late border airport closure for spread. If you scroll up a little, uh, there, there are picture stories there. I believe you will, believe, you will see it. Beneficiaries, uh, there you go. Uh, those are beneficiaries of relief package distributed by a Rotary Club of Bagada and a palliative distribution at Ikorudu, Lagos. So both sides, you can see pictures from Ikorudu. Uh, to the left, you can see pictures uh, from Bagada. Um, Still down, INEC to review resumption, pending polls uh, next week on page 8. Mystery deaths, five family members die in Enugu. Wow, that's scary. On page 5. And then Ekiti father who turned back son becomes COVID-19 envoy on page 13. Uh, buses conveying Zampara, Kaduna miners intercepted in Osho on page 13. Controversy surrounds video vixens electrocution in Lagos on page 4. And states using COVID-19 to make money, Northern Elders allege on page 10. All right, Mr. Legba, are you still there? Yep. Okay. okay. 
So, um, shall we begin with the screamer there? Uh, infected health workers rise from 40 to 113 in one week. What is this saying to us? So, that's, um, that's a very disturbing trend. Um, now, I know that even across the globe, there's been significant risk, obviously, to health workers because they are the frontline people dealing with this, mm. um, with this virus. But if that number, if the number has almost doubled in the space of a week, what it clearly points to is that they, there's, um, there's inadequate protection for these, for these health workers. So it could, be, it could be masks, it could be gloves, it could be um, the entire gear. So personal protective equipment, I think they're called. So if many of them are being infected, it means, again, we need to go back to the drawing board in terms of how we protect these people who are literally li risking their lives mm. to keep the country safe. Um, the military does it all the time right now. It's our doctors and nurses and other health workers that are doing that. So if they're risking their lives for us, then the, the, the least we can do is to ensure that they're protected, they're properly protected right. in doing it. And cases going from 40 to over 100 in the space of one week clearly shows that that's not happening. Mm. All right. Um, now, just below that story is COVID-19 patients seeking alternative treatment. Um, what are your thoughts? You know, there's also been this whole conversation of, well, why don't we as a nation employ indigenous uh, knowledge and maybe begin to take a look at herbs and other forms of treatment mm. results to that. If, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the conventional way it's not working for us to develop our own home-based means of tackling COVID-19. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think <laughs> at the end of the day, look, we're Africans. So a lot of us grew up with grandmothers who believed in herbs. Um, and a lot of the time they worked because that was what they were used to when they were growing up. They went um, modern, modern drugs and medicines in their time, and it worked for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying, um, I think we need to be careful, though, um, because there's always the danger of taking medicines that either make things worse or could be fatal. True. But the, I don't believe there's anything wrong with either using herbs or even... Um, the brilliant scientists that we have in our universities um, researching the, the efficacy of different vaccines. We, we don't necessarily have to wait for anybody to, get, to either develop a vaccine. We're not, um, we're not dumb in Nigeria. I'm sure, I'm sure we, can, we can do that if we're given the resources to do it. We have, I think we have enough professors um, What's it called? You, you, we ha we, we've, got, we've got enough professors in the country. We've got enough vi uh, virology experts in the country who can actually sit down and do this. So I think it's a combination of both. And this is a serious, serious fight. So whatever we can, whether it's herbs, whether it's, um, uh, w whether it's in the science labs, whatever it is, I think everything should be on the table. But I think we need to be careful at the same time that we're not just using trial and error on people's lives. Right. That, that's a very important uh, point that you're highlighting there. Uh, on, I mean, on a lighter note, I don't know whether you saw the video of this equity father who turned back his son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you saw that. He, he, he's received a lot of praise as a result. Well, he now becomes a COVID-19 envoy. How do you respond? I think it's a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the video and I was, it wasn't, I was, I was actually laughing as I was watching the video mm -hmm. because it, even the person recording it was laughing at yeah. some point because the man didn't seem like he was serious, mm -hmm. but he was serious at the same yeah. time. Was um, and he me. was under no circumstances was he going to let his son into his house. And I don't blame him because the, these, these, these guidelines were simple. We need to be able to follow simple rules. Um, don't travel into states. Um, don't, if for any reason, maybe an essential worker or whatever you do, you stay in isolation for two weeks, not to, to cure the disease or anything, but to make sure that um, you're not showing symptoms or you, you don't need to either be tested or anything like that, and certainly not transmit it to anybody just in case you're carrying it. And I think that's a simple enough rule. Um, so 
I uh, <laughs> have a lot of respect for the man because at the end of the day, that's his son. But I'm happy that the Ikiti state government has given him well-deserved recognition, in my opinion. I agree with you, Lulu. I'm afraid that's where we're going to wrap it this morning. Thank you so very much, Lulu Elegbe, for no your problem. time. No problem. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's where we'll call it a wrap on of the press this morning. We do this, remember, Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa. The time is 8.30 a.m. We take a look at the newspaper or dissect it, try to make sense of it as much as time will allow us. We do that with in-house analysts all remotely. I am Amaka Okoye saying please stay safe out there.